Rossi. We expect the pace of this matchup to be hectic as well. Both teams averaging over 85 a game, and they're both unbeaten. Well, although both teams like to get up and down and run, Wisconsin has a very big lineup. They have 10 players who are over six foot. They like that matchup. For Tennessee, they are speedy. They have a lot of quickness on the perimeter, and they're slashers to the basket. Wisconsin will uh, come at teams with one of the best three-point shooters in the nation. Katie Voigt had six trays in the semifinals. You know why she can shoot the three? Not only has she worked on it, but she's six foot. She can shoot over the smaller perimeter guards. And on the other side, Tennessee counters with Shamiqua Holtzclaw. She had 29 points in the semis. Despite some foul trouble, she was still phenomenal. A Holtzclaw might be the best player in the country who's never been player of the year. I think this year will change all that. We know she can score. You know she can rebound and run the floor. This year, she's added defense and passing. All I can say, Beth, is awesome. <laughs> Number one, Tennessee, and 10th ranked Wisconsin. We'll tip it up from Anchorage right after this. Wisconsin ranked 10th in the nation with a 9-0 record. Tennessee at number one. They are 12-0. Both teams have rolled through the competition to get into this Northern Lights Invitational Championship matchup. And a packed house. A lot of excitement getting ready to see the top-ranked team in the country as we take a look at the Perk Plus starting lineups for Wisconsin and their head coach, Jane albright Dieterly. Clapperick, Boston, Sims, Peyton Voigt, good size for this club. But you have to watch Clapperick because she's going to be the key for Wisconsin. At 6-2 in the middle, she will be tough to match up for this Tennessee team that uh, really doesn't have the solid post play they've had in recent years. As we take a look at the Pert Plus starting lineup for head coach Pat Summit. Holtzclaw catching Stevens, Randall, and Jolly. What they don't have in size, they make up for with their quickness. Well, they make up for their quickness, but Kelly Jolly right here is the glue. She is the point guard, but she has a three-to-one ratio. Assist to turnovers, you love to have that for a guard. These two have met in each of the last two seasons. Tennessee has won both of those by 11 two years ago, and then last year, a terrific matchup down in Knoxville that Tennessee ended up winning by four points, and it was the free throw shooting that decided that game, and both of these teams get to the line an awful lot, Nancy. Well, down the stretch in that game, the Badgers missed a lot of front ends of one-on-ones, but for Wisconsin, they have made more foul shots this year than their opponents have taken, 200 to 145. Same goes for Tennessee, about 100 more foul shots taken than their opponents. Wisconsin in red and Tennessee in white. Both of these teams have had a terrific time uh, up here in Alaska. And done all kinds of sightseeing and dog sled racing and snowmobiling. And now it's time to get down to the business at hand for this Northern Lights Invitational Championship matchup. What a test for Wisconsin this early in the season. We know they're 9-0. Last year they started off the season 7-0, and then they kind of struggled, and they ended up 16-11. But to play against Tennessee in December, it's great for your team. What does Wisconsin need to do to be effective here tonight? Well, they've got to put defensive pressure on the ball. That's why Didi Pate is starting the game, because she has that quickness in the man-to-man -man defense. Shamiqua Holtzclaw short on the jumper. And it is out of bounds off of Tennessee. Crucial for Wisconsin to get off to a good start here to stay close. Pat Summit's club has been almost unbelievable in the second half. Well, they only allow their opponents about 26, 27 points a game because they turn it up defensively. Freshman Latanya Sims turn around is off the mark. Holds club for the rebound. This is Tennessee basketball right here. They love to push it up the floor. Well, the other thing that Tennessee can do is any one of four players can bring the ball up the floor. And the jumper from Jolly hit the top of the backboard, so Wisconsin will get it. Here's a good look at Latanya Sims, one of the top freshmen in the country for Coach Jane albright Dieterle, the first WBCA All-American to commit to play to Wisconsin. But Jane was also telling us she was the type of player that didn't want to start going into the Stanford game until Amy Wersma, who hurt her thumb, couldn't play anymore, and she's just such an unselfish player, Sims. Boston hits for three. That 
was a very good offensive set by Wisconsin against the man-to-man -man defense of Tennessee. If you're going to screen, make sure you set it and don't have a brush screen. We should also mention that both of these unbeaten records are legit. They have played very good competition to this point in the season. Shally off the dribble. Sims may have gotten a piece of it. Klepper, the quick outlet to D.D. Pate. And Pate has it swatted by Tamika Ketchings. Tennessee quickly the other way. What a great defensive play by Tamika Ketchings. It looked like Pate was going in uncontested, and she still got a piece of the ball. Ketchings and fellow freshman Teresa Jeter, one and two in block shots in the SEC statistics thus far this year. Well, what you're going to see from Tennessee on offense is a two-headed center with Jeter and Stevens. They pretty much split the game. Tamika Ketchings with her first basket. She has scored 21 points in both the first round and then the semifinal matchup in this tournament. So let's not forget that Tennessee loses their total inside game, Passion Thompson, Tiffany Johnson, and Abby Conklin to the ABL. Klapperick with a turnaround jumper, the senior from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Holtzclaw, quick off the dribble, and Voigt with the weak side carom. Wisconsin, very good at boxing out. They're very fundamental. They get about five or six rebounds more a game than their opponent. Klapperick off to a good start as Ann Klapperick. Well, she's a leading scorer. She's averaging about 18 points a game, but in the, the game against Ole Miss, she only played about 15, 16 minutes in that game. She got in foul trouble. Shamika Holslaw in traffic. The putback is good by Shamika Randall. The three Meeks, as they have been called uh, lately for Tennessee, scored 73 points in the semifinal win as Voigt takes it to the hoop, the rebound Stevens. You, you don't get into the Mika club just by being out on the court. You got to do something to get into that very elite club. Randall from the wing. She's a charter member. <laughs> Six Wisconsin, three and a half minutes into this first half of play. Sims drives the baseline, strong move by the freshman. Her first basket. Wisconsin has wins this year over Stanford and also a big win at Maine. Tough place to play on the road. But that's what you have to do if you want to take your program to a different level. You have to start scheduling the best. And you're seeing that, Beth, around the country now. Teams are no longer having those gimme games because of the RPI rating and getting into the tournament. The foul will be charged to Tanisha Boston. This is the fourth ranked team that Tennessee is facing this year. Their last matchup was against fifth-ranked Illinois. Well, they schedule. I mean, Tennessee schedules 13 ranked opponents. Last year, they played 39 games, and 22 of those opponents were ranked teams. So I think if you're Wisconsin or anybody else, you want to be in this situation this early in the season. Whole squad checks out, replaced by Teresa Jeter, a freshman from Columbia, South Carolina. Stevens misses on both free throw attempts. It's a good matchup right here. Speed and quickness against the six-foot height of Katie Voigt. Nice move by Voigt. Can't finish. Kept alive by Sims. Over the top of Jeter won't go, and Jeter has the rebound. See, Tennessee took Holtzclaw out of the game and went to a bigger lineup. Steven started the game, as I think Ketchings is going to get her contact fixed right here. She's over at the sideline getting that taken care of. And we'll take a timeout and be right back to Alaska after this. Tennessee early on. And already uh, an adjustment being made by head coach Pat Summit from Tennessee. I think it's a smart adjustment. She put Jeter in the game at six foot three because they are having problems matching up with the height of Wisconsin. And Jane Albright Dieterly. The head coach of Wisconsin, among the former assistants for Coach Pat Summit, 
that have never beaten their mentor. And this is a pretty uh, phenomenal achievement. Uh, some of the names on here that haven't been able to beat their former coach. Well, it's pretty unbelievable. Nancy Darsh now coaching with the New York Liberty and the WNBA. Chris Roberts, one of the great Olympians. And she coached in the ABL for the Atlanta Glory a year ago. Sylvia Hatcher won a national championship in 94. <laughs> Randall. Blocked by Boston, but a foul will be called on the play. I love Samika Randall. I love the energy that she brings to the Tennessee lineup. Whether she gets her shot, blocked right here. Look at that right there. In the air, she gets Boston up. And that time, that was clean. But just look at that athleticism right there. Let's forget she's not that big at 5'10". Going to get the trees, of course. <laughs> She's already got five points here in the first half. Second personal foul, Char. shot at the basket. Randall, a 68% free throw shooter, is three for three. Well, Randall and Catchings go to the line more than any other lady ball. Randall gets there almost four times a game. Catchings gets there almost six times a game. Randall almost had the steal diving down on the floor and is tied up by Sims. Randall tried to call a timeout. So you don't teach that kind of stuff. That's the stuff that last year when Sneaker Randall was watching the Lady Ball basketball games and they were losing 10 for the first time like in forever, she's on the phone to Pat Summit. Pat, <laughs> can I play defense full court, not just half court? I mean, Pat had to just be going, oh my gosh, what am I going to get next year? <laughs> she has been a bundle of energy, that's for sure. They've got Voight in trouble in the corner. And Randall called for the reach. That will be the first on Tennessee. If you get somebody in a trap in the corner, don't reach. You just got to use your body, keep your arms up high, and make them pass over you, not around you. Paulus looking for some help. Leans in on the shot. and is called for the offensive foul. That's what happens when you pick your dribble up in the corner. Kelly Jolly doing an excellent job of cutting off the baseline, using her feet to get there, and then forcing the shooter into a bad shot. Kristen Clement, number 33, another one of the freshmen from the Philadelphia area, replaces Jolly. She has been slowed by a foot injury this year and has slowly worked her way back into top form. And this is the other part of the fabulous foursome that may be the best recruit, recruiting class in the history of women's basketball. Randall on the miss, Catchings keeps it alive, and the putback, Shamiko Holdslaw, her first deuce. I think you're going to see a lot of this. You're going to see Clements at the point guard position with the four freshmen and then with Holdsclaw. Clements has such great vision when she passes the ball. It's a 9-0 Tennessee run. It's the kind of defense that can just totally take you right out of your game. Boston. Nice pass on the backdoor cut to Sims. Clapper, the fadeaway is short. And 
Wisconsin will keep it. What a great job right there by Tanisha Boston. She's a six-foot junior, but she was all over the glass. Well, your college basketball dreams have come true. If you love the hoops, check out ESPN Full Court. Available on pay-per-view, hundreds of extra college basketball games. Only $89 for the season package. Order by December 31st and save on ESPN Full Court. More defense in the takeaway by Tennessee. Give me the number. I've got to call. <laughs> I need more <laughs> basketball bets. Well, this was the area of concern for Pat Summit after the semifinal win was at the defensive end, and they have come out playing much more fired up. Well, I know that she was disappointed with how the defense played against A&M, Texas A&M in the, the semifinals. A&M was on fire. Mm -hmm. I mean, they made some tough shots. And a timeout called by Wisconsin after Jeter's turnaround. 11 unanswered points for the top-ranked Lady Vols, and t Wisconsin will try and regroup. That's what happened in the game yesterday, is Tennessee got down to 11 points, and then all of a sudden, Coast uh, takes over, and Tennessee goes on a 17-0 run, and it's bye-bye, that's win number 12. <laughs> Well, Wisconsin is very excited about the start that they have had this year and also their new coal center, which they will be playing in uh, by late January. And just an amazing fan base that they have in, in Wisconsin, at Wisconsin, and they're going to love their new digs. Well, it's about 17,000 seats in the new auditorium. I said I, the arena, and they'll play about seven games there to close out the season. But I had a chance last year to go up to Madison, and I was just so impressed with the fans there, the facilities, and obviously the program, what Jane's done in such a short period of time. Jenny Rhodes, number 42, with the ball has come into the Wisconsin lineup. Shot clock's under 10, working inside Klepper. Fadeaway is good. She is so tough to guard because Klepper has that fadeaway. She keeps the ball so high over her head, you cannot block it. You can only contain it. Fantastic shot. She, <laughs> <laughs> she had Holt Squaw right in her face on that shot. This is Tennessee's free play where they try and get a screen. Nice feed, catchings doesn't convert. Holtzclaw has it knocked out of her hands. Tennessee will keep it. 11.49 to go here in the first half. And we will take a timeout. 17-11, Tennessee on top. Tennessee faithful making the trek up to Anchorage, including the Tennessee women's athletic director, Joan Cronin. Well, not only is she one of the great athletic directors in the country, you know what, if you're building a business, you want Joan Cronin at the head of it because people come into Tennessee to see how she's built the marketing and not only what Pat produces on the court, Pat Summit, but also people don't realize this, Joan Cronin was a, one of the basketball coaches mm -hmm. at Tennessee, and uh, she was eight and 10. She decided she was going to go into administration. <laughs> We told Joan we'd tease her a little bit about her record, but uh, certainly made all the right moves administratively, which you see with all the top programs now, Nancy, they all make the commitment from the top on down, and that's really what you need to have a successful program at this level. It's the business of basketball. It is the 90s, and you have to have the money to support all the things you need to recruit and to do everything else from a marketing standpoint, and Joan has done it, and Certainly, she's got the coach to do it on the court. Jeter working inside, has trouble containing the dribble, and is tied up by Katie Voigt. Good help defense by the Badgers. Speaking of administrators and uh, coaches and, and marketing, we should uh, say congratulations to Jody Conrad, who earlier this year had win number 700, the first woman to reach that milestone down at the University of Texas. How unbelievable is that? I mean, she has just done it internationally. She's won. She's won at the collegiate level. Catching sweet move to the hoop. And she has a chance for a three-point play. Jenna Hartwig whistled for the personal. If you cannot rotate over in your defense, you're going to be sliced up. See this right here? She gets inside of two players. Hartwig has to make that commitment to step over one more step and just take it right on the chest. We'll get the mammogram later. <laughs> you got to take the charge. 
Freshman from Duncanville, Texas, one of the terrific high school programs in the country. Catchings converts. And she did it all at Duncanville. They won Texas State Championship. One of the legendary programs in women's high school basketball. And on the drive, Hartwick is fouled and will go to the line. Personal will be charged to Teresa Jeter and Jenna Hartwick, a senior from Janesville, Wisconsin. Everybody in the lineup, with the exception of one player from the state of Wisconsin, homegrown talent. Well, that certainly helps when you have players that want to stay in the state. They have their fans and their family, and that's why you see that Wisconsin is seventh in the nation, <clears throat> averaging over 6,300 people a game. And the interesting story about Hartwig, uh, not only a hoopster, but a mom as well. She has a daughter, Ashley, and one of the uh, married members of this Wisconsin team. And Ashley's probably wondering what she's getting for Christmas. <laughs> Ashley, mom hasn't told us, but we know it's going to be big. <laughs> Ashley would probably love a win over Tennessee for Christmas this year. Wouldn't that be pretty special for their program to beat a Tennessee and a Stanford in the same season? Well, they are already off to their best start ever. 9-0. Hold squaw, pull-up jumper. When she is going left and pulls up right, the elevation on her shot is just so smooth, and she has such a quick release. You know, she honed that in her story of Queen. That's right, a New York native like yourself. Love it. I know she just had a blast going back playing in New York against Manhattan a couple weeks ago. Sims takes it strong to the hoop. Latanya Sims now has four. And he came in the country with one of freshmen like Latanya Sims because she is big, but she can put the ball to the floor as well at 6'3". She was one of the big reasons they were successful against Stanford the first game of the year when they pulled off the upset. Jeter in traffic. Knocked around and it's out of bounds off of Sims. Well, the defending NCAA champion Wildcats of Arizona. Way on the deuce. Sims tied up by Clement. And the possession arrow gives it to Wisconsin. Both coaches substituting freely to this point. This is the third game in three nights for these two teams. And they both have pretty deep benches, so I think that you will see both Jane Albright Dieterle and Pat Summit using a lot of players, especially in the first half. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think anybody will play more than 25 or 30 minutes in the ball game. Hardwick yeah. has it knocked away by catchings, and they will reset the 30-second shot clock for the kick. It's the first time ever that Tennessee has had no seniors on their team. If you want to take away the fact that Lori Milligan, the great guard that they've had, is semi-retired, let's say. Semi-retired would be good. Uh, she has a degenerative, degenerative knee injury, and the only game she played this year was in her hometown of Portland, Oregon, and that was just really a curs cursory type of appearance on the court. Jolly. Catching three off the mark. Elsie and Voigt fighting for the loose ball, and it will stay with Tennessee. The coaching staff says we might see Milligan if Tennessee makes it to the Final Four. So I think that would be great because she deserves a chance to be in four Final Fours. How many players have been able to do that? Three, I think, all told at Tennessee, the class of 89. And the whistle will go against Wisconsin. And Jenna Hartwig has picked up her second personal. The big lineup right here, but very active. Look how Samika Randall at five foot ten gets inside against six foot Hartwig. There's so many big players, but if you don't box somebody out, and that time the shot went up, everybody kind of looked at the ball, and here comes sneaking in is, is Samika Randall. Randall now five for five from the line, and it's definitely one-sided in Tennessee's favor in terms of free throws attempted here in this first half. Randall already has nine points. Well, that's going to be a problem for Wisconsin. If they don't get to the foul line, then it's just saying that they're not attacking Tennessee and they're not drawing fouls on some of Tennessee's key players. Clapwork back in. Hartwood sits down. Back 
Panthers got out to the quick start, and it's been Tennessee since then. Pate with the turnover. Just very smart play right there by Tennessee. Dee Dee Pate comes in the game. She's not warmed up. You throw the press on her, and she's the type of player that wants to push it up the floor. That time, she was going for the home run. Kyra Elzey. Offensive foul called on Elzey. First on her, third on the team. And that's Jenny Rhodes, the hard worker, the blue-collar worker for Wisconsin. See, everybody sees what's happening. LZ cutting to the basket. And somebody has to just say, I'm going to just stay there and get the charge. And that time, Jenny Rhodes did that. Voigt. Sims over LZ, short. Clapper. Another rebound, another bucket. Clapper keeping them in the game right now. She's got eight. Clapper, we know about how strong she is. It's been well documented about her weight room training and strength training. But this year, she really came in in great shape. She did the stairs. She did a lot of extra conditioning. And you're seeing the difference in her game right now. Coleslaw in the paint. Randall keeps it alive. Tracked down by Dee Dee Pate. Pate with Jolly to beat. Pull up jumper is good. Dee Dee Pate, the sophomore, she averages about four and a half a game, but you got to remember, Dee Dee Pate wears a hearing aid. She's legally deaf. Sims running the floor, has Voight with her. Sims takes it all the way, and she is whistled for the charge. possession for Latanya Sims. Well, she's coming down here. You forget she's six foot three, but Kyra Elsey was able to get back and get solid position right there. Boom. Tennessee's trademark sacrificing the body. 24-19, the Lady Vols on top. Back to Anchorage after this. And O taking on 10th ranked Wisconsin with a nine and O mark. And Tennessee out 24 to 19 with 7.51 to go in the half. So far, Wisconsin doing a nice job of keeping uh, the three Mikas under control. They average about 50% of the scoring for Tennessee. Pretty good collision there between Holtzclaw and Rhodes. No whistle. Wisconsin will get the basketball. This is a pretty physical game to be expected from Tennessee and Wisconsin. Right here, the, the pass, Holesclaw just dips her shoulder. Now you wonder why there's no either charge or mm -hmm. we've seen that pattern with the officials so far. Oh, Big Ten and the SEC follow that no blood, no foul standard throughout the course of the year. Tennessee's been staying in their man-to-man -man defense throughout the first half, the same with Wisconsin. Clapper, triple team, Jeter with the steal. Jolly to Randall, nice hesitation move, basket in the foul. There are some players who are exciting and electrifying to the basket, and there's some players that just flat finish. And Samika Randall finishes because she has great focus and concentration. Watch this, the little pump fake, freezes the defense, hop step through, but watch her eyes, they never leave the basket. Randall gets the free throw as well. 13 first half points for the freshman from Cleveland. And the turnover will give it back to Tennessee. The pressure taking its toll here in the first half. That's a, what? I think the officials are discussing whose ball it is now. Will be Tennessee underneath the basket. Tennessee, with their talent, can run a variety of offenses. They can go motion, they can go a little isolation for Hope Claw, or they can run the triple post offense. And Pat Summit has spent quite a bit of time with Phil Jackson trying to figure out the intricacies of the, the triangle offense. It's worked pretty well for uh, Jordan and Pippen and company. 
It's one of those offenses that it's a read and react, and you have to have the right personnel. And Tennessee's doing a little bit more trapping right here. They want this to be as up-tempo as possible. Paulus high off the glass for two. Kelly Paulus with her first bucket. Well, she was all Big Ten freshman of the year last year, Paulus. Catching's nice. Baseline bounce pass to Hope Strong. Some people pass the ball to the post, and some people feed it to the post. When you feed it, it's for a score. Catching is a great passer. Patrick. This time, just single coverage, and she makes Tennessee pay. You know, her nickname is Brick House, but she has such a beautiful finesse fadeaway yep. shot. Real soft touch. She has 10 to lose Wisconsin thus far. Jeter, no look feed. Catchings, off-balance turnaround. Off balance for most people. Just one of the moves that gets her open for Tamika Ketchings. Ho hum. Ketchings in double figures now with 10 points. And as great as Holzball was her freshman year, Ketchings comes in with even more athleticism and intensity. And she had another piece of that one, but is whistled for the foul as well. That'll be her second foul for Catchings, and that's been a problem as she's so aggressive defensively, she has a tendency to get some fouls. Kelly Paulus, the sophomore from Lacrosse, Wisconsin, to the free throw line, a 68% free throw shooter, and one of six former players of the year from Wisconsin on the Badger team. Watch Kelly Paulus's foul shooting. I mean, she can draw rain on her shot. I mean, look at the beautiful arc that she has. Wisconsin, a very good free throw shooting team at 77%. And the season, about 22 for 29 on the average as she gets one of two. Jolly taking her time at the point for Tennessee. Lady Ball spread the floor very well. Another feed down low, Randall, now with 15 in the first half. Well, Tennessee gets you with all this activity on the strong side, the little give and go, and then if you're not alert on the weak side, you get Randall or Ketching sneaking behind you. Eight surveys the defense. Ten on the shot clock. You, you have to get some dribble penetration against Tennessee to break down their defense and make them rotate. Hollis drives a foul and scores. Got Kelly Jolly off her feet. It wasn't bad defense by Kelly Jolly. Just a great power move right here. See, Kelly goes up. But look at the strength and the follow-through by Kelly Paulus at 5'11". She is strong. You know, she's known as a great defender, but she's also averaging 11 points a game. Completes the three-point play. She now has six. Wisconsin would love to get the win for Jane albright Dieterle, their head coach. She won this tournament when she was coaching in Northern Illinois back in 1991. They defeated Louisville in the finals of that tournament. Jolly on the drive, and she draws the foul this time on Paulus, tip for Jack. The days of a team like Wisconsin feeling like it's a moral victory to just stay close to a Tennessee, those days are over. They have upped their schedule. They've got these elite teams. Now they have to start beating them if they're going to take their program to, it, to the level that they expect. Kelly Jolly with the free throw. Big chance, too, for the Big Ten is... Rachel Conlon, a freshman from Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, checks in. Big chance for the Big Ten to make some noise this year with a very good Illinois team. Purdue with a big win over Arizona, handing the Wildcats their first loss earlier today. 
And what about the game Illinois played against Tennessee in Knoxville? They were up 18 points, and in the second half, certainly the Lady Balls came back to win that game. But you're right. I mean, Illinois, Teresa Grantz's team is terrific. Flaprick. And in midair, Randy tried to call the timeout, but it will be off of Tennessee. Under four minutes to go here in the first half at the UAA Sports Center in Anchorage. Back for more NCAA basketball after this. For one ranked team in the country, 35-27 Tennessee over Wisconsin. Just a shade under four minutes to play. And the folks here in Alaska enjoying the action thus far. Both of these teams averaging over 85 points per game. Love to get up and down the floor. And Tennessee will have to hurry back onto the court. Voight was trying to talk the official into getting her the ball a little early. Sims had it partially blocked by Ketchings. But that's the thing, Ketchings does so well on defense. If she doesn't block the shot, she makes you alter it, and then a teammate can block it. Kristen Clement back on for Tennessee. Works on Clarman. The lefty hits the jumper. What a sweet shot, Kristen Clement. From Cardinal O'Hara High School in Pennsylvania. Broke Wilt Chamberlain's all-time scoring record in high school. Over 3,500 points. Look at the arm sore. And that, that record lasted for 40 years. All-time top scorer in Philadelphia High School hoops. And a, another turnover for Wisconsin. Tenth for the Badgers here in the first half. Well, the Badgers are shooting 48%, and Tennessee, until they played Texas A&M, no opponent this year had shot over 50% against them. In the semifinals, Texas A&M did shoot 50, and right now, very close to it, is Wisconsin. Holtzclaw gets that one to drop. Shaniqua Holtzclaw now with eight points. Boy, beats Tennessee down the floor. That's just her first basket. They will need more point production from her throughout the night. See, that's unacceptable, and I wouldn't be surprised. I was just going to say, Pat Summit's going to call a timeout. You might lose the ball on offense or take a bad shot, but you don't get beat defensively without seeing the ball in transition. And Coach Summit, a bit miffed, to say the least, at her team for not getting back on defense. She's not exactly wishing him a, a Merry Christmas on that particular play. As you see the, the championships that she's won. I mean, it, it's pretty unbelievable what she has done in her career as a player and as a coach. She was an Olympian captain of the 1976 Olympic team that won a silver medal in women's basketball. She's got a new book coming out March mm -hmm. 16th. I can't wait to read it. It's called Reach for the Summit, a motivational book. Also an HBO special will air right around the time the NCAA tournament starts next March. She's basically a living legend. That's <laughs> just kind of cut through the chase. Becoming here. a media mogul as well. Catching, strong move to the hoop. Coach Summit gets in catching space, and uh, the freshman responds on the offensive end. The Meeks have 35 of the 41 Lady Vols points. Shamiqua with a rebound. Randall around Kate. Terrific hang time from Randall, and she will shoot two. That's why she gets to the foul line so much, because she's always attacking the heart of the defense. And Coach Dieterle knows that we got to keep them out. You want to make them kind of funnel them to the sideline. Do not let Catchings, Pulseclaw, and Randall turn the corner into your defense. Third personal foul charge to Tanisha Boston. Randall, seven or seven, seven of seven, excuse me, from the line here in the first half. Tanisha Boston has to make sure she doesn't get that next foul, and she is going to come out of the game. Hartwig is coming in for her. Boston leaves with three points, all coming on a three-pointer. And it's not really her scoring, although she does give you about nine points a game, but she's a great rebounder. She can shoot the three, and she gives you that leadership as a junior. Clapperick with the dish. So Voigt misses on the three attempt. Holds ball quickly the other way for Tennessee. 
Shamiqua left alone, three-pointer off the mark. Clement with the steal. Good anticipation by the freshman. An even better decision right now to not see that she doesn't have the numbers. Pull it back out, run your offense, and use some of the shot clock. Tennessee taking its time on this possession. Clement thought about the three and then has fouled the reach around by Dee Dee Pate. That will be the first on the sophomore from Milwaukee. This might be the best passing Tennessee team that I've ever seen. And I'm not talking about just the fundamental pass. They can give you the little scoop pass or behind the back within a fundamental mode. But they're having so much fun out there. Lee Jean's halftime report will be coming up in just a few moments. 1.17 to play in the first half. You mentioned how successful Tennessee has been. I mean, this is the eighth time that Tennessee has started out the season being ranked number one. Uh, it's pretty unprecedented what they've done with the AP poll. They're one of two teams to be ranked every year in the poll for 22 years. Texas was the other team, and... Uh, Depending what happens with the Lady Longhorns this year, Tennessee might be by themselves. I mean, to be ranked at least one week every year for 22 years, amazing numbers as Hold Squad gets two more. Hold Squad joins Ketchings and Randall in double figures here in the first half. As Tennessee starting to open it up, 45-29. And Pate takes a charge on the collision with Kyra Elsie. See, I thought, I'm a little questionable on that call because I thought Kyra Elsie doing a nice job and I thought that it was a, a moving screen, a blind screen by Dee Dee Pate. Kelly Jolly checks back into the game, replacing Kristen East Clement. Hartwood uses the Voight screen for two. Jenna Hartwood has four. That play down low, if you get screened like that, you must switch. That time, Holtzclaw could have switched. Ketchings and Holtzclaw are definitely on the same page. 14 now for Tamika. You, know, you look at great players, and certainly Holtzclaw is, and you think, how can she get better? Well, she played USA Basketball this year. She was the youngest player of the team with players like Teresa Edwards or Jennifer Azey. She was a leading scorer and rebounder, but she also worked on her passing, how to make other players better around her. Void off the mark on that shot. Tennessee will get it with 23 seconds to play in the first half. Beth, I always thought that Cheryl Miller was the best player that ever played collegiate basketball. And at this point in Holtzclaw's career, I think she is the best player I've ever seen. She has the whole game, and that's saying a lot for Cheryl was incredible. Hartwood with the steal and the layup. Jenna now has six. And that will take care of the first half of play. Tennessee with Randall Holtzclaw and Ketchings all in double figures leading Wisconsin 47 to 33 despite 10 points from Ann Kleppert. The Lee Jean's halftime report is coming your way. To the University of Alaska Anchorage. Tennessee leading Wisconsin 47 to 33 at halftime of the Northern Lights Invitational Championship matchup. Taking a look at the Nike first half statistics and a couple of them that jumped out at us, Nancy, will head down to the free throws and the turnovers. Well, certainly turnovers are going to get you because Tennessee turns those into points for themselves and the foul shooting is crucial for the Lady Badgers, or for the Badgers, I should say, because that's been the staple of their scoring. They have, as we mentioned, 200 more shots made than their opponents have taken. On the Chrysler storyline, the good news for Wisconsin, they are holding their own on the glass, and Claprick was strong with 10 first half points. Tennessee over for 50% uh, from the floor, and Samika Randall in that first half, leading the way with 16, one of three Lady Vols in double digits. 
And here you get a chance to take a look in the first half. Klapperick was the bright spot for Wisconsin because, you see, this is a mismatch right here over the 5'10 Randall. No matter how high Samika jumps, Klapperick has that fade and nice follow-through. And then for Tennessee, Samika Randall got a little bit of payback here. Kelly Jolly moving the ball around, but see right there, the pump fake freezes the defense. When you're that quick and can get into the seams, and somebody like Randall's a great finisher. And then it was the other Meek, the other freshman, catchings on the inside. She can take you down. See that little fake to the baseline is what got the defense leaning and opened up the middle for her. The Meeks have 40 of the 47 Tennessee points <laughs> in the first half. As we mentioned, Randall 16, Catchings 14, and Holdsclaw 10. And for Wisconsin, Klepperick has not gotten much help from the other two big scorers, Latanya Sims and Katie Voigt. And one difference to start the second half, a little bit of zone by Wisconsin right now, forcing Tennessee to shoot the outside shot. Kristen Clement is in the game, starting for Kelly Jolly. Randall misses, Sims with the rebound. Sims, Voigt, Kate Clapper, and Boston, who is playing with three fouls, is starting this second half for Wisconsin. Randall Catchings, Clement, LaShonda Stevens, and Shamiqua Holstraw in white for Tennessee. Seth, it's very important offensively for Wisconsin. Dee Dee Tate needs to penetrate and pitch, as you and I talked about a few minutes ago off air. If she does that, she's going to be able to set up Katie Boyd, who is one of six in the first half. That lob right there is not going to work against Clements. You've got to shift her, move her, and then come back to pay, uh, to Boyd. Tate gets it inside to Clapperick. Rejected by Ketchings. Her third block of the game. Just underway in the second half. Kristen Clement in and out. And Sims has the rebound. Sims needs to get on track with Boyd on the offensive end. Nice defensive play by Holtzclaw. The two of them were 3 of 13 in the first half, and they have got to give Jane albright Dieterle some more production. The last play for Tennessee. Watch this. You don't teach this to the freshman. It's instinctive. Clapperick is going to take her baseline. Look at the left hand. If you're a kid wow. at home, go to the left hand, because if Ketchings had used her right, she would have been crossing her body and off balance. Just a great heads-up play by Tamika Ketchings. 27th block shot on the year. She leads the team in that category. Second on the team to Jeter, I should say. Catchings in the corner for three. Her second triple of the game. That'll take you out of the zone rather quickly. I don't know that Wisconsin is going to stay in their zone very long because when you have Clement, Catchings, Randall, all can shoot the three as well as Holtzclaw. Boyd, they're trying to work her around several screens. Pretty dish to Clapperick gets it to go. Clapperick now with a dozen. See, that's the thing, as you just mentioned, for Katie Boyd, she needs to be set up because she cannot create her own shot. And Boyd whistled for the foul at the other end. The first on Katie Boyd, seniors from uh, Woodruff, Wisconsin. for Tennessee, gets it out top to Shamika Holtzclaw. Three freshmen, a sophomore, and a junior on the floor right now for Tennessee. See the movement right there by Tennessee. It's just that read and react, penetrate, pitch out. Constantly probing that defense. Clement misses. And tracked down by Randall. That will go out of bounds to Wisconsin. Randall so active on the offensive glass against Texas A&M. She had 23 points, nine rebounds, but six of those were offensive rebounds. Well, the 
coaching staff thinks that Randall may be one of the best rebounding guards ever at Newton and Knoxville as Sims draws the foul on LaShonda Stevens. And the key right now is that Sims is going to get a couple of freebies at the foul line. Sims was 9 for 11 from the line in the semis. This is her first trip to the strike tonight. Well, Latanya Sims, they call her T, but she needs to get some touches down low, not just to touch the ball, but where she can turn and score or turn and draw some fouls. I think that's the adjustment right now that Wisconsin has made. They're trying to give it to her in those positions. Kyra Elsie and Teresa Jeter check in for Tennessee. How about somebody like Sims? She breaks the high school scoring record of her friend Keisha Anderson. Over 2,005 points in Washington Park. Keisha Anderson now playing for the Colorado Explosion in the ABL. I mean, she was one of the most exciting players I saw in college basketball last year. Yep. No doubt about that. And, what, and for somebody like Dee Dee Pate as a freshman to play against her all the time. Voight. And Katie Voight definitely playing more inspired here in this second half. Draws the foul on Teresa Jeter. There's no doubt that Katie Boyd was told at halftime, you have got to pick up your intensity level. This time off the dribble, a nice move to the left, drawing the foul. Boyd sat out last season with the ACL injury that we spoke about earlier in the game. It's all in the family for Boyd. Her dad coached and played at Wisconsin. Always something a little special about the coach's kids. Well, not only did he play, but he also was an assistant coach at Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So uh, he took it to that next level. But yeah, it is. I think when your dad or your mom, whoever's coached, it sure, it sure does help you learn the game. Mm -hmm. Blocking foul will be called on Ann Klaprick. Tennessee able to get the ball up the floor so quickly. Tamika Catchings will go to the line as it's the second on Clapper. Catchings a 75% free throw shooter. A member of the USA Junior National Team this past summer. Along with several of her teammates, including Elsie and Samika Randall and Kristen Clement. Played for Coach Rini Portland at Penn State. One of the fine women in, in college basketball. Rini Portland played at Immaculata, one of the storied programs in the history of women's basketball. And they won the gold medal for the first time ever, the USA Junior National Team this summer. And with that type of talent, I mean, the future for USA basketball is very bright coming off the gold medal in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Stripped by Holtzclaw. Four on two, Lady Vols. And Holtzclaw loses it. Good defense by Boston. Turnover will give it to Wisconsin. Credit Tanisha Boston with a nice defensive play, number 33. I thought Shamika Holtzclaw was going to use her great spin move, but she told me yesterday, I wore that move out last year. I'm coming up with a new move. Nancy, give me a new playground move. You're from New York, girl. But the monitor just a little slower than yours. <laughs> Holtzclaw almost had another steal. I said, you have a lot of perimeter quickness. She says, Nancy, we don't even call it perimeter. We call it perimeter. <laughs> they don't have enough time to get per out. They just go right to perimeter. She was not able to talk uh, one of her former high school teammates, Sue Bird, uh, to join the group at Tennessee. Bird heading to UConn in a terrific recruiting class that Gina Oriema has, the Huskies this year. That will be coming in next year, I should say. Well, Sue Bird is the real deal. What a game that she has all round game rebounding scoring but Christ the King I mean it is the Mecca of women's basketball right now Old Squaw's first bucket of the second half she has 12 her high school coach said that once Shamika graduates from college you have to be pulling for UConn <laughs> Voight spray in the paint Katie Voight Katie Boyd doing a great job of moving without the ball, getting in a position to use her height advantage. Boyd has five. Wisconsin continues to hang around. And another takeaway this time by Clapper. 
Wisconsin getting into the dangerous part of the game where so far this year Tennessee has been able to just blow people away in the second half. Kick will reset the shot clock and we'll be back to Anchorage. 15-19 to go in the game. Tennessee by 14. Welcome back to Anchorage, 54 to 40 Tennessee. And Dee Dee Pate, a terrific story. The point guard, the sophomore from Milwaukee, is hearing impaired, and she wears a hearing aid out there on the floor and actually changes from one ear to the other at halftime, Nancy, so that she's always always has the hearing aid on the same side of the floor as the bench so she can hear Coach Albright Dieterlich. Well, it would be kind of tough if uh, she decided she didn't want to hear Coach. Hey, I can't <laughs> hear you. I, I had to run the play I ran. Not the one you called, Coach. No, but she really has done a tremendous job. I see a big difference in her game from last season. But a lot of that is because of what Keisha Anderson did on the court in helping develop her. Zone right now. Tamika Ketchings. And Tennessee just shredded the zone coming out of the timeout of Wisconsin. You've got to bump the cutters off their route. And that time, there was no physical contact by Wisconsin. Catchings now with 21 to lead all scorers. Good ball movement by the Badgers. Clapper, two more. She's got 14. Last year, Clapper was the second in scoring and the leading rebounder. This year, she's taken her game to a different level. Jeter tips it up to keep it alive. Wisconsin finally clears it. Pate over Jolly. No one in to rebound for Wisconsin. For Tennessee, so much attention is paid, rightfully so, so to uh, Holtzclaw and then certainly to uh, the Mikas that have come in. But I think that Jeter, Teresa Jeter, the 6'3 freshman, from Columbia, South Carolina, is going to be a really great player in this program. And Tree, as they call her, doesn't get the bulk of the attention, but all she does is her job. I mean, right now she leads the SEC in block shots. She had five against Louisiana Tech. Tree in the big three, they call her freshman. And I think she's the one that is talking with the coaches, impressed them the most or surprised them the most about the impact that she has had. Well, as I said, they use that sort of two-headed center with Lysandra Stevens. They split time, but they average about 13 points and nine rebounds between them. Count the basket for Claprick. She draws the foul from Ketchings and is all fired up. Well, we've got more basketball coming your way on ESPN with the Honda Elite. That is tomorrow afternoon on ESPN. Iowa and Vanderbilt also playing in that classic. That'll be on the deuce. They went for Vanderbilt. Ashley Smith, the point guard from Oregon City, is phenomenal. I mean, she has such great court vision. She's one of the top assist leaders in the SEC already. Only about five foot four. Catchings working inside. She got the bucket. Will they count it? And they will count the hoop. Catchings will go to the line. It's a great call right there by the officials. First person on Jenny Rhodes, Tamika Catchings. Now with 22 in the game, or 23, excuse me. So far, it's been a storybook year for Tamika Catchings out of Duncanville, Texas. She gets a chance a couple days ago to play against her sister, Tagma who plays for Illinois, a sophomore there. Her father, mom, cousin, she said everybody was in Knoxville, Tennessee for the game, and what an incredible game she had as well. And if you're unfamiliar with that story, they are the daughters of former NBA player Harvey Ketchings. Spent 11 years in the pros. Claprick shot the Wisconsin team looking for a tip on the shot. The officials will talk it over, and Wisconsin will keep it. Jane Albright Dieterle, mentored at Tennessee, said she learned so much about defense from Pat Summit. And then when you want to get better, you know what they do? 
she goes to the Wizard of Westwood. <laughs> she goes out to see John Wooden a couple years ago, and he says, emphasize defense, but practice offense. She learned from the best, that's for sure, with Summit and Wooden. But that's the neat thing about some of the coaches in, in women's college basketball. They want to learn. Pat Summit goes to Phil Jackson. Uh, Jane goes to John Wooden. Kelly Jolly nails the three. Kelly Jolly, take three, call me in the morning. <laughs> That's her first bucket. She's got five now in the game. Knocked away by Shamika Randall. Always causing trouble out there on the floor. Well, you know what she does so well when Boyd dribbles the ball, it's a higher dribble because she's 6'1". You try to steal the ball when it's on the way up, not on the way down, and that's what Randall did. Clackwork with the head fake and the bucket. She is going to town inside, now has 21. Clackwork said that if she could play another sport, she'd like to be a welterweight boxer. And that's why <laughs> we're here, and she's out there. Well, Tennessee really doesn't have anyone to match up her strength at this point. It's Jolly. Puts in another three. She's got eight. And it's just played so consistently for Tennessee this year. Well, so much has been said of Jerry Rice coming back with that remarkable comeback. Well, Kelly Jolly is not any less remarkable. She tore ACL last year. She missed the first 16 games. She came back in two months and three weeks. Matter of fact, she was rollerblading after three weeks. What is wrong with you, Kelly? Incredible. I mean, what a competitor. Let him help lead him to the Final Four. Championship. Old Squaw. Put back by Randall. Her first bucket of the second half. She has 18. Who's ever on the off weak side board for Tennessee is going to get a lot of hoops this year because when so much attention is paid to the penetrator, everybody looks that way with whole claw catchings, you're going to have a field day with offensive rebounds. Voigt's leaner now gives her seven points. 66 points for Tennessee, 53 of them coming from the three meets. We mentioned what an important game this is for Wisconsin. Jolly from NBA range. Kelly Jolly, three for three from behind the line. But for Tennessee, they've been beating teams by an average of 32 points, Beth. So this is a good chance for them to see how they react in a tight situation. Another foul will be called on Samika Randall. Well, perhaps a message was sent by Coach Summit to Kelly Jolly. She did not get the start in the second half and has come off the bench to drain three threes. Here's the most recent one, 69-51, Lady Vols. Oh, Holtzclaw with the miss, but Randall is there to finish business. So everybody just looks at Holtzclaw right there and Klapperick looking at the ball and not laying a body on Samika Randall. 69-51, the Lady Vols with 10-23 to play in the Northern Lights Invitational Championship matchup and Tennessee and Wisconsin, two of the latest uh, pretty big names to make the trek here to Anchorage. It's been pretty amazing, the teams that have been here, Louisiana Tech, North Carolina, Old Dominion, Southern Cal, Stanford, obviously Tennessee, Texas, all those schools that I just mentioned, ha they have won national championships. Only UConn has never been here. This is the 19th year of this tournament. Blackrick with 23 now in the game. Been some terrific players that have set foot on the court here as well. We've got Olympic years. Yeah, I mean, Olympians, you have All-Americans, Ann Donovan from Old Dominion, Cami Etheridge, Susie McConnell, a two-time Olympian, Cheryl Miller, Teresa Weatherspoon, who plays in the WNBA for the New York Liberty. You know, Pat Summit was a pretty darn good player in her time, too. Mm -hmm. Her teams play just the way she did. She was a great offensive rebounder. She was a really good passer. But she had so much intensity, and she loved to get on the offensive glass. Well, that has been uh, one of her trademarks in winning championships. Rebounding and playing good D. Sims 
Jim's has had a quiet night for Wisconsin thus far. Tennessee has done a good job of slowing her down. What's the old saying? Offense sells tickets, defense wins championships. Tamika Catchings fouled on the drive to the basket. And that will be on Kelly Paulus. And some foul trouble now for Wisconsin. That is her fourth personal foul. Catchings with a career-high 26 points in Tennessee's win against Texas. She is getting close to matching that here tonight. Well, she did that in 26 minutes off the bench. But it seems like the points she gets, all three of them, it's just so quick. And they get a bunch of them in the first half. And the second half, it just keeps coming. Gets one of two, 24 points in the game. And Tennessee will keep it. Claw off of Jeter's screen. Randall says, cannot be me, but it is. Call for pushing off on the rebound. Even though Samika Randall got that foul, those are the ones the coaching staff at Tennessee can live with because it's an aggressive foul and it's certainly trying to make something happen. Paulus from the wing. The follow no good from Sims. She'll try one more time and gets it to go. Sims now has eight. Such a quick jumper and very persistent on the glass. She could start for any team in the country. She is that good, Sims. A very great teacher, just a freshman. Jolly, tough pass to Jeter. But it's pretty much like Jane Albright Diddley was telling us yesterday, that these kids, they see the po potential to play in the pro leagues, whether it's the WNBA or the ABL, and they want to get better. Travel gives it back to Tennessee, and the Honda Elite 4 to ESPN2. You mentioned Jody Conrad getting her 700th win, the all-time leader in women's basketball with Jim Foster. Great coach of Vanderbilt just got his 400th a couple weeks ago. That will certainly be a good test for the Commodores. Vanderbilt in the top 10 at 8th in the country. They got a nice team. Good inside-outside game. They have uh, Nishima Hillman, who is a former high school teammate of Samika Randall's, who we're seeing tonight from Trinity High School in Cleveland. One of the players that's tough to match up with with Vanderbilt is Lisa Ostrom at about six foot two. She can shoot over you, she can go around you. She's a great rebounder. Clement tried to hook up with Randall. Pass goes out of bounds. They are joined on the floor by whole squad catching Jan. Lashonda Stevens. It's Klaprick, Hartwig, Voigt, Didi Pate, and Sims in red for Wisconsin. Both teams on the floor unbeaten so far this year. Tennessee at 12-0, Wisconsin at 9-0. The unbeaten ranks have already dwindled by one today with Arizona's loss. And Holtzclaw took a shot to the neck. She's taking harder hits on the streets of Astoria, Queens. I know that. I mean, it's never easy to get hit like that, especially in the neck. But she'll shake that off. The court that probably has the most pressure for Tennessee this year might be LaShonda Stevens because with the graduation and then the loss of Passion Thompson, Tiffany Johnson, and as we mentioned earlier, Abby Conklin, she is only a sophomore, and she's the starting post. Mm -hmm. go against Latanya Sims. That is the second on Sims, and we'll take a timeout with Tennessee leading Wisconsin. 70 to 55, 750 to play in Anchorage. Jolly has the last three three-pointers for Tennessee. They are above average at 46%, coming in at just 28% on the season. And Wisconsin, not only below their average, but also below the number of attempts they usually have. 
Well, right there, Katie Voigt has only taken one in the game, and the same thing with Boston. Tanisha Boston, who's been on the bench in foul trouble, she's only one of two. So good perimeter defense by Tennessee. Hold squad gets a bucket. Well, Voigt made six threes in the semis. Hold squad now has 14 points. This is Voight working the baseline, knocked out of bounds by LaShonda Stevens. One of the other stats that says a lot about this Tennessee team is the number of steals they have. They average 16 per game. And as you mentioned earlier, creating nearly 30 turnovers per contest. Well, you talk about the turnovers, but usually the steals from Tennessee lead to their baskets. That's, that's what's so good about it. They can generate a lot of points, and that's why the Meeks score so much. Catching's in traffic. Clapperick says she had all ball. The officials disagree, and now Ann Clapperick has four personal fouls. We talk about the consistency of the three Meeks. They have led all of UT in scoring during the regular season. The only two players who have been kind of in that Meek club is Misty Green and Kyra Elsie, so I guess you would call them Karika and Mystica <laughs> if you actually wanted to add them into the club. And now you were talking to them yesterday and they said you might be an honorary or Nancyka? I'm a Nancyka. And really they just wanted somebody a little bit older and established <laughs> in their club. They needed a, a veteran Mika to join. Another steal. Let's see if Tennessee can turn it into some points. Randall looking for Stevens. Shot clock now at 10. And Wisconsin has been back into their man-to-man -man defense, and Randall says, I love when somebody guards me one-on-one. -on -one. That's what I did my whole high school career. Timeout called by Wisconsin. It's certainly nice to have the luxury that Tennessee has. Two freshmen now with over 20 points in the game. Randall and Catchings have combined for 44. And Holtzclaw has tossed in 14 as well. Tennessee in control back after this. Holly Wallach right there, one of the all-time greats in women's college basketball, an Olympian in 1980, a three-time Kodak All-American. And she came to Tennessee in 76 on a track scholarship. She was running the 440. She was running all these incredible races, and she was a walk-on at Tennessee, the only female to have her jersey retired. I think she's going to be a future Hall of Famer. Of course, I'm going to vote 10 times. She's been a long-term member of this, a long-time member of the staff. As Kristen Clement gets the breakaway bucket. Kristen Clement is just coming into her own. She's had an ankle injury that's kept her out. She was, well, I should say she was diagnosed November 10th with a stress fracture, and she's now played in five consecutive games. She had a career-high 12 points against Akron and six assists in 19 minutes. Full court pressure being applied by Tennessee. Another takeaway. Hold squad. Off glass for two. The sweet kiss by Holtzclaw. She now has 16. An opportunity to join Shell Miller, I believe, is a four-time All-American. Sims with the turnaround. There's been very few of them. Ann Myers, a four-time All-American. Lynette Woodard, Cheryl Miller, Shamiqua Holtzclaw will be. And a timeout called by Wisconsin with five. 43 to play. Coach Jane Albright Dieterly trying to figure out a way to chip away at the Tennessee lead. Trailing by 22. <laughs> 79 57 Tennessee with 543 to play. The top ranked team in the nation. And the Lady Vols looking to go to 13 and 0. And Interestingly enough, with all the success that they have had over the years, only three other teams have gone unbeaten through December. 
most recent was the 94-95 club that went 16-0 before their first loss. And that was to UConn on January 16th. Well, the Lady Vols have a date with the Huskies in early January. They return to action just after the new year against Arkansas, a team that has gotten off to a good start in the SEC. They've got another great one, Christy Smith. Coming back from an ACL injury. You see so many of those ACL injuries in women's basketball. Catchings has a steal. Three on two break. Randall. Hang time blocked by Voigt. Put back for Catchings. And Catchings has tied a career high with 26 points tonight. Voight left alone for three. She has not had many good looks like that tonight. Now that was one of the few that she has had. LaShonda Stevens and Voight fouls her on the shot. It's gonna be a long year for a lot of teams that play Tennessee because if they keep this intensity level up, they keep coming at you. They've got the whole repertoire working this time on the alley-oop. Stevens draws the foul from Voigt, but Stevens can run the floor. Kyra Elsie can run the floor. Jeter. Every, I mean, everybody. Mm -hmm. They're just so interchangeable at so many positions. And, of course, the rumbling's already starting in some parts with the uh, Lady Vols fans. You start hearing whispers about that undefeated season and the potential that this club has to join... Texas and uh, Connecticut as national champions who have run the table. Well, I think with the schedule that Tennessee plays, that it really sets them up to not have an undefeated mm -hmm. season. But you never know. Here a little change in defense by Tennessee. Going to a 2-3 zone. Void on the drive. Cannot finish. Catchings and Clappert battling for the loose ball. And the whistle will go against Tennessee. going to be charged to LaShonda Stevens. Now that's something that Pat Summit a long time ago wouldn't do. She would stay with her man-to-man -man defense, and I think she's figuring that I know how to utilize this thing to change the tempo, to give a different look, and she'll throw a, a half-court zone at you mm -hmm. every once in a while. I think it's a, a, a great compliment to what they do defensively they played three games in four days. Yeah. <laughs> and they got chewed out pretty good after yesterday's defensive performance. Clapperick now with 25 points. Kyra Elsie along the baseline. Stripped. Holtzclaw goes down to get it. And timeout called by Holtzclaw. Tennessee had last year. At one point, they were 10 and 6. They go down to Old Dominion. They get beat. Pat Summit is sitting around trying to figure out how many wins do I need to get to the NCAA tournament. <laughs> Hard to believe. They ended up with plenty in the national championship. Back to Anchorage after this. They're a car. And Tamika Catchings with a new career high tonight with this basket. You kind of think that that 27 points is going to be pushed higher and higher and higher <laughs> as the season goes along. Yeah, she has by no means reached the ceiling. Well, she's only averaging 27 minutes a game. Can you imagine when she starts playing in SEC play or tournament time 30, 35, 40 minutes a game? Clapper, triple teamed. Voight, acrobatic move for the bucket. Katie Boyd stepped up her game in the second half to give Ann Klepperick a little help. And she scored in double figures in every game this year, now has nine tonight. Clement draws the foul. 
Kristen Clement will go to the free throw line. Well, Tennessee will stay unbeaten if they hold on here to finish it out. Wisconsin will fall from the unbeaten rooms. Kristen Clement sees that the seas have parted and is able to draw the foul to the left side. Fourth personal on Boston. There are some other surprising unbeatens that remain, including North Carolina State at 9-0. Washington a winner today. They go to 7-0. Southwest Missouri State at 7-0. And then you're familiar with the Florida International Program creeping in at number 25 this week in the USA Today ESPN poll. Well, they have the number one RPI. That's the rating percentage index. That says who you've played, who your opponents have played, and they're number one this week. Cindy Russo, the head coach of Florida International, recruited me to go to Old Dominion. And my teammate, Ing Nissen, who is the All-American center, one of the great centers of all time, mm -hmm. she is the assistant coach, hence the pipeline to Europe mm -hmm. for Cindy and Ing. Ing is from Denmark and played in, uh, in France when I first met her. Well, that pipeline has certainly grown all across the country, Old Dominion, utilizing foreign players. Connecticut has a tremendous rush in this year, Svetlana Blomsimova. Misty Green. Misty Green comes into the Tennessee lineup for first action tonight. Green and Jr. from Decatur, Tennessee. And Holstra goes out of the game. She has been named the most outstanding player of the tournament, her second MVP award of the year. And she had a double-double tonight. Well, that's not surprising. You know, she wears that 23, and most people think, ah, she's wearing that for Michael Jordan. She says, no, it's the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want for any more MVP, MVP trophy. <laughs> Just a player of the year award. 16 points and 10 rebounds. Clement with the layout. She is joined on the all-tournament team by Samika Randall and Tamika Catchings. What a surprise. I'm Kate, shocked. <laughs> Katie Hoyt from Wisconsin and Ann Claprick. Wisconsin's got a nice team, Beth. They're going to do a lot of damage in the Big Ten this year. They've never won the championship, but this is the type of team that certainly could. They've got the experience. They've got some good athletes. And have to be strong to survive in the Big Ten, and they are that. Well, you're right. They're big. They're strong. They're well-coached. And very hard-working players. You can see some of their competition in the Big Ten on Sunday afternoon on ESPN2. Iowa taking on Vanderbilt. Connecticut meets Tennessee. So we hope you'll check out the Honda Elite Four coming up Sunday afternoon on ESPN and ESPN2. Oh, there's so much great women's basketball on TV this year. If you're home, if you're some of the young kids in high school or junior high, if you can't see it, tape it. You got to start watching these games. Find the players you like, the styles you like, and start putting it into your game. Coming up again, two following basketball. Big old contract for Eric Lindros this mm -hmm. week. Very nice. It's going to set the standards of the NHL, the salary standards, just a little bit higher. I also see where Wayne Gretzky is in a scoring slump, hasn't scored in five games, and they're already concerned about. What's wrong? Can you imagine that being a slump, not scoring in five games? Well, I had a chance to go see the Rangers play in the Garden a couple weeks ago when he hurt his knee, and he might be a little bit slowed from that. But he sure has been playing well early in the season. Sounds like I'm a Gretzky fan. <laughs> Paulus Clemen able to catch her from behind. And Wisconsin will keep it, trailing 87-62 with 116 to play. And really a win-win situation for Wisconsin to have the experience of playing against this Tennessee team. And knowing now what they still need to work on to continually improve over the course of the season. Oh, well, you're right. What a bonus for Wisconsin. You get to play the number one team in the nation on a neutral court. So you don't have to deal with the fans down in Knoxville that give them such an edge. Boyd misses on the shot, knocked out of bounds to Tennessee. Badgers continue to scrap. Clapper with the steal. Well, that's what you have to do. 
you can't quit against a team like Tennessee. You, you still want to send a message not only to them, but to the team you're going to play next that we play for 40 minutes. It doesn't matter if we're up or we're down. And this is good. They're, they're coming after LZ, trying to trap her. Misty Green's jumper is short. Voigt with the rebound. You Tennessee, you don't want to foul. You just want to contend, contain on defense, and dot, no, don't stop the clock. Sims tries to keep it alive. It will go to the Lady Vols with 23 seconds to play. Tennessee will improve to 13-0 and 0 with the win. Badgers falling for the first time this year. Their best start in school history, though, coming in at 9-0. And, oh. and I can't see them going 16-11 and 11 like last year. They have too much experience with the five seniors, the leadership. Mm -hmm. You know, Beth, it's not Keisha Anderson's team. It's not the great Barb Frankie's team, the all-time leading scorer. It's their team collectively, and they take pride in that. Mm -hmm. 10 now for Kelly Paulus, and that will take care of business. The MVP of the tournament, Shamika Holstraw, 16 points and 10 rebounds. A career-high 27 points for Tamika Catchings and 20 for Samika Randall. For Wisconsin and Claprick, a valiant effort with 25 points. Paulus and Sims had 10 apiece. And the final score, 87-66. The Lady Vols will stay number one into the new year. For my partner, basketball game here for the Tennessee women came against.